This is a Saturday morning TV log from Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Welcome to another Saturday morning TV log, and this time around it's King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, brought to us by Golden Films, Creative and Development, and Bobot Entertainment. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. I'm Duel, better known to you as the Big D. This, of course, is Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So today's Saturday morning TV log is King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. A show that actually got its start on the Amazing Adventures blog. It was one of my favorites on that blog. Originally premiering in September of 1992... The show was created by Gene Chalapin, who also had worked on some other shows. Well, most notably with Deke, who also worked on <clears throat> several of the, well, several of the Amazing Adventures series. Maybe not all of them, but, well, I'm checking. Yeah, it, this was just the only one he worked on. He did work on some other shows as a screenwriter. But anyway, yeah, because I knew the name sounded familiar. <clears throat> Plus, Diane Eskenazi of Golden Films and found few, well, the founder of Marvel Studios himself. Avia Rod, who was also chairman, C, you know, well, the chairman of, of Toy Biz, excuse me, everyone, were also the executive producers of the series. Now, of course, I grew up watching the Amazing Adventures block. This was one of their first shows to premiere, right? and I really got to enjoy it. <clears throat> Now, the show's premise had King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table trapped in the Cave of Glass by Arthur's sister, the evil enchantress, Queen Morgana. Unable to free Arthur and the Knights himself, the wizard Merlin searches the timeline for replacement knights. He finds the quarterback of the New York Knights football team named Arthur King and transports him and his teammates to Camelot after one of their football games. He appoints Arthur King as the, their leader with his teammates as the new Knights of the Round Table and assigns them the task of freeing the true King and Knights. Yes, as the Merlin's intro, well, opening words start out, and then from the field of the future, a new king will come to save the world of the past. To do so, they must find the twelve keys of truth, one for each knight, that only the knight in question can initially touch. Once all the keys are found, the real knights will be free, and the team will return home. In the meantime, they pledge fairness to all, to protect the weak, and vanquish the evil. Yes, the knights are armed with special armor and are able to summon their respective creatures at any time when in battle armor. These animals, such as Arc there's wyvern are emblazoned on their shields. The series had a progressive story with both sides advanced towards their goals. Continuity was also established in the episodes, which would be brought up in later episodes, along with some my well repeat minor characters, character relationships, and previously overcome weaknesses of the knights. Despite the continual movement towards a resolution, the series is unfortunately incomplete and ended abruptly during the second season. Only two seasons came, and 26 episodes overall were produced and aired. <clears throat> now, now, let's see. Now, of course, we have a pretty good voice acting cast. Voicing our... The new King Arthur of the series, Arthur King, is Andrew Cavadas. Next, Scott McNeil voices Lancelot, Tone, and Trunk. I'm trying to find out. No, oh, and, and also Breeze. Yes, all of these have 
Ham. You know, odd sorts of names. Oh, wait a minute, I made a step. Lee Jeffrey was the voice of Breeze. My mistake. Who also, he also voiced Wally. Next we have Brick and Phil, voiced by Gary Chalk. Michael Donovan voiced Darren and Lug. Mark Hildreth voices Gallup. And Zeke. <clears throat> Jim Burns voices Merlin. And Queen Guinevere voice, is voiced by Kathleen Barr. Yes. Who also voiced the Lady of the Table. And Morgana as well. Who was the, the central primary antagonist. And is a by her second in command, overall field commander, Lord Viper, who is also voiced by Gary Chalk. They have all these warlords as well, including Axe, Bash, Blackwing, Blinder, Hammer, Lucan, Slasher, Spike. Yes. Now, but then soon they get new. Well, bangs in the form of. The Purple Horde, Katana, led by Master Chang, a Katana-wielding leader of the group. There are an army of Asian warriors who missed the Knights in the second season. I rarely could remember this, but um, it's been years since I last saw the show. But anyway, I think this is still a pretty good show. I wish it would have continued. A third season should have happened, but it didn't. I mean, now, King Arthur and the Knights of Justice is easily, again, one of my top five favorite shows from the Amazing Adventures block. Of course, other shows on the block have been favorites of mine, including Double Dragon, Street Sharks, and, oh yeah, and Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders, which has no relation to the show. Anyway, let's see. Even so, after this, there would be some stuff that came out, including a three-part comic book miniseries from Marvel, as well as action figures from Mattel. The show actually got re released on video and DVD in North America, and soon got released in a complete series set from Image Entertainment. It got released in the UK as well. Now, during the late 2000s, the whole series had been made available for free watching through internet streaming at the LICO Sync TV service and on Kidlet. Between 2012 and 2014, it has also been available for instant streaming on Netflix. And now, of course, um, Golden Films released the series via Amazon, which I'd say they probably still have the full series in 2016. And as for the last three years, it has been available for the, from the subscription service, Watch It Kid, and also the full series is also available on Tubi, if you haven't seen it. I think you can also find full episodes on YouTube as well, but I can't guarantee you that, but I, I'm almost sure there's some full episodes on there, but if... But I'm pretty sure you have to pay for them. But, well, let's not try to get to any, jump to any conclusions yet. Still, now, a website known as Topless Robot was ranked this show first on the list of the 10 most ridiculous adaptations of Arthurian legend. In 2009, and then two years later, on the eight mostly forgotten 90s cartoons. In 2017, Screen Rant put this on their 15 most WTF adaptations of King Arthur. However, writer Mark McRae gave this show a positive review, thanks to Gene Chap Chalapin's creative touches, which include a great premise. Exceptional storytelling, beautifully drawn animated characters, which I have to agree. I think the animation was very good. 
Now, of course, Creative and Development, the following year after the first season, would later go on to join Sumbo Productions and working on Conan the Adventurer, which would later be shown on five days a week, after it had formerly been on Saturday morning. Still, after its two-season run, King Arthur and the Knights of Justice did continue in reruns. It later got shown on sci-fi. I'm pretty sure it did. Oh yeah, one other thing. There was, oh, even after its cancellation, there was a game video game released on the Super Nintendo in 1995. I've only seen a little bit of it, and I've heard it's not really good. It looks okay. It's from Enix, you know, um, part of Square Enix, um, before they came. Came part of you know the company that gave us some um, Dragon Warrior, well, or it's Dragon Quest now to us, and it's kind of a action RPG in ways, not quite, probably not quite as good as Legend of Zelda though. But anyway, but despite the show ending abruptly, it still, however, gave us what would be the true ending to the actual series as you go into a final confrontation with. Wayne Morgana. I've never actually taken the time to see a full walkthrough of the game, but I'm pretty sure if I have the time to watch one, then I will certainly check it out. But I've heard the game does have some issues, though. I'll talk about that if I decide to review that. I mean, I have the game, but, well, I think you get the point. So now you know about King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. I think it's really something. And... Oh yeah, one other thing, Shuki Levy, who of course also worked with Haim Saban, actually composed the music for the series. Uh, I almost forgot about that. But yes. Anyway, so what are your thoughts on King Arthur and the, and the Knights of Justice? You can tell me in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, consider checking out these other Saturday morning TV logs. In the upper left-hand corner is the Saturday Morning TV log I did on Double Dragon. The upper right-hand corner is the Saturday Morning TV log I did on Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders. Or go to the bottom left-hand corner and see the Saturday Morning TV log I did for Conan the Adventurer. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., as well as the Saturday Morning TV log, then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching, and stay, stay tuned, because later tonight you will get a review of The Secret of Nim. So again, thanks for watching, and next week's Saturday morning TV log is Pac-Man. So until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.